Welcome, folks, to Morning Worship. This is worship for the 14th of August. Hope you're doing all right. I'm back from leave. No need to adjust your sets, yes. I have a beard. It just grew whilst I was away and came back with me. We have a daily conversation, but anyway, most importantly, this morning's message comes from Susan Halford, and readings come from David and Maddie Whiting from Brookside, so thanks to them. You can see an image before you. This is a cenotaph, one of the attested sites or suggested sites of the birth of Abraham, who became Abraham, of course, the father of uh, the faith of the theistic religions. And the reason we've got that there today is because our reading from Hebrews remembers how faith has carried generations along. Just a couple of minutes to go before people join us, finally. Give you a little bit more space. And then we'll start in the usual manner. Don't forget, yes, that this worship is recorded, but the way I see it, I'm beginning an act of worship that you'll be joining with me later. Once again, this is not a dress rehearsal, this is for real. So do get your prayers and your comments in the comment section. A hello already from Ray Arnold. Ray sadly is in hospital at the moment. One of our wonderful supporters on live stream worship. Just talk to him, in fact, and see he says hello. If he can listen, he's going to be listening in. But there'll be others known to you who are unwell at this time. And commiserations if you're not able to make it to church. It's been really good to see whilst... I've been away, people appreciating, just one or two, just appreciating the fact that we are reaching out in this way. So if that's you, well, we haven't forgotten you, and we really value you being there. Just a shout out that Morning Prayers is getting back into its stride again next week. Ooh, there are stories to tell, times we grew and the times we fell. Two readings that we're focusing on today are, yes, Hebrews 11, 29 to 12, 2, by faith. People were encouraged, took great strides. But also Luke 12, verses 49 to 56, Jesus bringing us to a point where we need to make a decision in life. A point of conflict, one that's hopefully resolved, where he's able to provide us with the peace that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit and finding life in its fullness. But Jesus is the cause of division. So welcome folks to Morning Prayers.
and welcome folks really good to see you hope you're doing okay hope you are continuing to enjoy the uh, reflective videos of course the first one the live stream video is well familiar to us uh, but the second one is still quite new we are the church we are one body we are more than just the single thing that we'd be doing so in a way if you notice it says we're we're more than just an hour on a sunday we're more than live stream and it's wonderful to be able to join with you and to give us that sense of being connected with each other wherever you are but especially commiserations uh, if you are watching at the moment because you're struggling to get to church for whatever reason then god's blessing be with you this is just for you uh, whereas i would invite and encourage people to take a look later at the really valuable message that i'm sure that susan's going to bring with her today uh, that that really we're keeping this service going because we're aware that not everyone can get to church on a Sunday. Sometimes they're unwell, sometimes folk are working awkward shift patterns, uh, sometimes they're elsewhere, maybe even on holiday, maybe even on holiday. Uh, but wherever you are, welcome. And this uh, broadcast is for you. Now, as I've mentioned earlier during the introduction, uh, we're going to hear two passages today. And one of them is from Hebrews. It's uh, and that's the, the, the passage that we're really going to centre on. Susan's going to reflect on that by faith, how, how faith has been at work throughout the generations uh, since the days of Abraham, who, of course, became Abraham, the father of the faith. Hence, don't go back and look at it now, but hence that introductory picture uh, that you'll have seen. Uh, so, so welcome, folks. It's really good uh, to uh, see you. Now, first things first, let's just begin, shall we, with an opening prayer. I'm actually using the second preaching service in the Methodist uh, worship book. And uh, I, I encourage you in this, if you've got an own arrangement, you know, go back to your Methodist worship book. It's really wonderfully crafted prayers in here if you are faced with an own arrangement on the plan. But I'm using the prayers and it's for the second service uh, in the Methodist uh, worship book itself. So, Lord our God eternal and wonderful holy to be trusted you give life to all you help those who come to you and give hope to those who call on you set our hearts and minds at peace that we may bring our prayers to you with confidence and joy through jesus christ our lord amen amen and a prayer of adoration. Blessed are you, Lord our God, in your love you create all things out of nothing through your eternal word. We glorify and adore you. Blessed are you, Lord our God, in your love you redeemed the world through our Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify and adore you. Blessed are you, Lord our God, in your love. You empower your people through the gift of your Holy Spirit. We glorify and adore you on this day. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, perhaps you'd like to pop in the comment section a, a prayer that uh, gives thanks to God for something good that's happened this week. And pop it in the comment section and uplift us all as we're watching and sharing together in the meantime a time to be still and to remember god's presence with us
Be still, for the presence of the Lord is moving in this place, is moving where you are. Rest assured, God is alongside you, with you, wherever you are, whatever you are facing. And we're going to hear a reading now from Luke's Gospel. Uh, David is going to be reading for us from Brookside. It's uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. It's a really challenging passage, and uh, rather than dodge it, We looked at it on Thursday, first day back when I was leading prayers. And the thing to remember when you hear this passage is that in the previous verses, uh, Jesus is speaking to a vast number of people uh, who have uh, gathered, a dangerously large number of people, it would seem as well, people at risk of of, uh, being trampled, being overlooked. And he is hypercritical of uh, the religious leaders of the day, And uh, he is clear that a time has come when uh, people are going to have to make a decision about following him and about following his Christ-like values. And so although Jesus comes promising peace, he 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 offers a a a word of reassurance, really uh, counterintuitive, though it might seem that these these words will bring challenge and division. But of course, although Jesus therefore says, you know, you think I was coming in peace. No, I'm I'm coming to bring division. We know the fuller picture, don't we? We know that Jesus appears, for example, before his disciples behind a locked door and says, peace be with you. He's constantly bestowing peace as a resurrected Christ uh, on uh, his followers. So we, we remember that. But the most important thing we hold to is that there's a time where we may well be required to stand for Uh, Christ-like values and uh, Jesus reminds us of this and he says of those listening at the time he says you know you know the signs of the times you can see what's happening you can't ignore this there's a choice that needs to be made so thanks to David for reading for us. Good morning the reading this morning is from Luke 12 verses 49 to 56. I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on there will be five in one family, divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, 
When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. How is it you don't know how to interpret this present time? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, challenging words from Jesus there. Thanks uh, to David, which leads us into a, a prayer of uh, confession. I think the resonating message from Jesus's words there is that we know what's being said to us. We know there are times in our life when we need to make the right choices and we don't always make those right choices. Um, let's come together in our prayer of confession. I'm going to allow silence between each of these lines so you're able to join me. Holy God, we confess that we have rebelled against you and broken your law of love. We have not loved our neighbours, nor heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In Christ we are set free, through Christ we are forgiven. And now, since we're united in Christ in peace, I invite us to share in the peace together. Christ is our peace, though he brings challenge. Christ is our peace. In the one body, we are all reconciled to God and to one another. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I'm going to allow you a minute now just to think about your offering to God. I always am a little bit nervous when I hear the word collection in church, which just seems about money, but the collection is not the, the collection is actually part of an offering. We offer our lives to God. So in, in the quiet, I just invite you to think about, given those salutary words, what is it that you are offering to God? Or what help do you need to ask God for to realign your life? with God's purposes. A moment for your reflection. Lord, give us the strength to walk your way. Give us the strength to do the right thing. Give us the strength to live by Christ-like values. Give us the strength to be open, but caring at the same time with our thoughts and feelings with others. And Lord, help us where we do disagree, to disagree well. We give thanks for the richness of your blessings around us. A prayer of thanksgiving. Remember, God's mercy is with us forever. We thank you, O oh God, for you are gracious. You've loved us from the beginning of time and you remember us in times of trouble and joy. We thank you, O oh God, for you came to us in Jesus Christ, who has redeemed the world and saves us from our sins. Remember that opening reflection that we shared, the video that talks about let this be a year where we celebrate God's forgiveness and how that transforms our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for you have sent your Holy Spirit who comforts us and leads us into all truth. Your mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear another reading now, and that's going to be read by Madeline. And that is from Hebrews, of course, Hebrews 11. Uh, we hear about how faith has sustained people through uh, the generations. So we're going to follow that with a song before we hear a reflection 
uh, from Susan. And that song is Great in Power. But let's hear first uh, the reading from Hebrews 11. Uh, thanks to Maddie. Good morning. The reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 through to chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched round them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute, Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice and gave what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they may gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in the desert and the mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commanded for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise him, you heavens and all that's above. Praise him, you angels and heavenly hosts. Let the shining stars. Praise Him, you heavens and waters and skies. Let the whole earth praise Him. Great in power, great in glory, great in mercy, King of heaven.
great in power and yes we remember the power of faith uh, this morning now uh, susan it will be sharing her reflection with us shortly i have not heard what susan has to say all i know is that the video is ready and waiting and i'll be watching with it just as you'll be watching it for the first time i look forward to what susan is saying but i'm reminded as i think about her preparation and as i'm mindful that we're making the last few changes to the plan the last few tweaks I'm reminded to pray for all of our local preachers that are out working today and for all of our local preachers anyway and uh, we pray also for our worship leaders and I would like particularly I'd like you to join with me in a prayer as we remember them as they discern continually how God is calling them to preach and lead worship and and we pray that they would find great fulfillment and that they would be uplifted in serving uh, the congregations in many different ways so let's pray lord we thank you uh, for susan but we thank you for all of our local preachers and worship leaders across the churches uh, we pray for all of our local preachers as they continually discern what it is that you're calling them to say and we pray for our local preachers and worship leaders as uh, they reflect on how you're calling us to share things as well and where where in what spaces we're being called to share your word so lord we pray that you would bless our leaders of worship and our local preachers in jesus name we also pray and are mindful of acts of worship and prayer that take place within small groups lord as we think as a circuit about how we encourage our small groups so lord our worship leaders our local preachers and yes our ministers as well our supernumerary ministers and our serving uh, ministers as well and we give thanks especially for janet as she joins us in the circuit shortly so lord please we pray that you would speak to us through susan and her words today help us to retain in our hearts that which you want to say to us amen hebrews is a letter written to jewish christians it is thought to have been written before ad 70 so they would have been young as far as their faith in Jesus went. In the passage we have just heard, the author of Hebrews is explaining to them how to live by faith, encouraging them by pointing to people who had gone before them, who they would have known about from the scriptures, who had put their faith in God, throughout their lives, despite the struggles they had gone through. These people who lived by faith are referred to as a great cloud of witnesses who surround us. The message version of the Bible calls them pioneers who blaze the way and veterans who are cheering us on. They encourage and inspire us to keep going in our faith by throwing off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and running with perseverance the race marked out for us. The Commonwealth Games are prominent as I am reflecting on this and we now have the European Championships. The athletes we see competing in races are doing their utmost to win. They do not have a chance of winning without putting themselves through a gruelling training programme, keeping themselves totally focused on the end result, whether that is winning or arriving at the finish line, preferably with a personal best, pushing through exhaustion and any setbacks keeping to a strict diet and routine 24-7. Most athletes will say though that they could not do it alone. They have family and friends supporting them all the way. They have trainers helping them with their techniques. They may receive sponsorship to give them the time needed to train. And they have other athletes to compete against. Running a race takes commitment, perseverance and hard work. It is not something which just happens 
without any effort. Do we think about our life of faith in those terms? Putting our faith in Jesus does not just involve us committing to an hour on Sunday to worship God. Following Jesus is 24-7. Faith is a way of life and it does not just happen without any effort on our part. The early Christians, as described at the end of Acts chapter 2, were meeting in the temple, but they were also meeting in each other's homes, sharing meals together, celebrating what Jesus had done for them, learning together, praying together, and sharing everything they had to help those in need. They were committed to following Jesus together 24-7. When John Wesley started the movement which became known as Methodism, everyone was put in a small group known as a class where they came together weekly. The word class immediately brings to my mind school. And it was a place of learning. Learning about what it meant to live by faith in Jesus. But it was also a place of encouragement and a place where people were held to account. It was a place where faith was encouraged to grow as others walked alongside you and you walked alongside others. The Methodist class system is cited as an example of cell church, a church where the small group is of primary importance in encouraging faith to grow and for nurturing new disciples. And the larger group is for celebrating what God has done and is doing in our lives. For many today, the small group is an optional extra but if we are committed to living by faith in Jesus, it is the small group which will help to build our faith and help us to run the race God has marked out for us. It is within a small group that people share their lives and encourage each other when the going gets tough. It is within a small group that we each discern the gifts and talents God has blessed us with and wants us to use in the race marked out for us. It is within a small group that good habits of reading God's word and putting it into practice, of supporting each other in prayer and in practical ways becomes organic, a natural way of life. The first small group were the 12 disciples who Jesus called to follow him. A small group who lived alongside him and learned from him what it meant to live by faith. The author of Hebrews describes, encourages us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because he lived a life of faith from start to finish, always running the race, knowing where he was heading. May we, encouraged by the ones who lived a life of faith before us, and encouraged and supported by the ones who we walk alongside today, live a life of faith and run with perseverance the race which God has marked out for us as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have shown us through your Son, Jesus Christ, just how faithful to us you are, as he died that we might live. May we always keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, and through the power of your Holy Spirit at work within us, 
May we live by faith as we run with perseverance the race you have marked out for each one of us. May we be blessed by the encouragement of others and may we bring the blessing of encouragement to others. We pray in the name of Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. And thank you to Susan there. I was really encouraged by not just the, the parallels of what's uh, involved in training as an athlete uh, for uh, a race. I have some very distant knowledge of that. I was never a kind of national or international athlete, but once upon a time I did a long time ago. I did just run half marathons and the occasional marathon. And yeah, I can really relate to the discipline, the way of life. It's a way of life training. And although um, I don't think I could run very far right now, I'm into cycling now, um, well, I do know, and a lot of us know, about the discipline that's involved and that, that sort of uh, crosses from, from running into other areas of life and sport in particular and teamwork. You know, the lessons we learn there, we apply later on. So I was really in encouraged by that and uh, that it's still hard work. It doesn't come uh, via doesn't come easy and we depend on others to support us many a time my wonderful wife has been halfway around a course you know encouraging us on but um you know perhaps it's a time now to think about who might we want to pray for who's given us encouragement uh, but also i'm really encouraged by susan's focus on the small group as a place where we can grow and strengthen ourselves in our faith and if that interests you and you're not part of a small group then do feel free to contact us put something in the comment section or perhaps you might be able to talk to uh, one of your church stewards and leaders because there are existing small groups across our churches, but also new ones as well that have developed quite recently. And then, of course, there's also our live stream worship, which is a small group of its own uh, kind of, uh, uh, of its own particular design, really. But the thing that we're looking for is people to be anchored to a church community. But yes, the primacy of the small group was uh, one of the things that, that made Methodism uh, so successful in surviving and thriving in challenging times, in challenging times. Enjoy this next uh, worship song. I'll be with you later. I'll come and share our prayers of intercessions. Meanwhile, if you are able to think of somebody or if there's any particular needs that you'd like us to remember as a community, please do put them in the comment section. Amen. you can do oh god of wonders your power has no end the things you've done before in greater measure you will do again because there's no prison wall you can't break through and you can't move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it
I hope you had some time just to think about some of the focus, some of the things you'd like to focus on in prayer. Although the song is uplifting, isn't it? I always find it a bit strange. Just uh, taking offerings uh, during songs is a strange one. Like whilst we're singing and trying to focus on the words, uh, you know, for those who are free can put some money in the collection plate. It's, that's always been a bit of a weird one for me. Perhaps it's a bit unfair for me to ask and say, have a think about who you want to pray for whilst you're singing. Anyway, but uh, I do hope you've had a chance to. To think about who you might like to remember we're going to use um, the prayers for others uh, in the second service of the methodist worship book there is a response when i say um, let us pray to the lord we respond lord have mercy in peace let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the peace that is from above and for our salvation let us pray to the lord Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world and for the life and unity of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may worship God in spirit and in truth, let us praise, pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all ministers of the church and the whole company of God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the governments of the nations, that they may seek justice and peace for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own country and local community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, for the afflicted and for prisoners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, that we may truly serve him, who called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. That with all who have served God and now are at rest, 
we may enter into the fullness of unending joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known for before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And there's plenty of things beyond this litany of prayers that you may well have wanted to pop in the comments section. We remember the fate of our own government at this time. We remember the war in Ukraine. We remember tensions between China and Taiwan. We remember the ongoing battle against Covid and against terror in all its forms. We also remember the increased cost of living that people will be facing, particularly associated with inflation and the rise particularly in fuel bills. But really you are the ones that will make these prayers. I encourage you to write those comments if they're not there in the comments section. So many needs surface when you read this litany here and we conclude by saying the lord's prayer together uh, once again i'll begin with the first line and as part of our live stream tradition i invite you all to end with amen if you're able to say it that's great if you can type it it's even better as we get that sense of journeying together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Amen. Amen. Well, once again, it's been a pleasure to be able to spend some time in worship, reminding myself that I'm part of a wider community. Even though I'm on my own, I know that you'll be joining with me later. But I close with uh, the blessing. Wherever you are, once again, I just pray that you know and sense God's closeness, God's presence, God's blessing. The blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit being among us. And remain with us always. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord bless his people with peace. And we go out into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Amen. Once again, folks, it has been wonderful uh, to join you. like you, Lord, in all the earth, matchless love and beauty, endless worth, nothing in this world can satisfy, cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry, your presence is here.
this world can satisfy Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry